Webtoon is an awesome platform for comics. I think we all know that. Uh, but a lot of people ask me what it's like to work with Webtoon, so I wanted to walk you through my experience with them, both good and bad. Hey, Walter here, and today I'm going to talk about what it's like to work with Webtoon. Now, in a previous video, I talked about how I became a featured original Webtoon creator, uh, but today I'm specifically going to talk about what it was like signing the contracts, writing the scripts, creating the artwork, working with the editors, interacting with the readers, uh, getting paid and all that fun stuff. Uh, so let's get started with what it was like getting the contract. Now, the contract I got in the mail. Uh, that's a little different for me. I usually sign contracts online, but this I actually got a physical copy of the contract. I got two copies actually, one for myself and one that I had to send back uh, through snail mail back to Webtoon. Uh, now I'm not a lawyer and so you shouldn't take this as legal advice, but what I did, I read the contract myself. I sent the contract to some friends I trusted who are used to reading these types of contracts. I did not seek out a lawyer, but if you're super concerned with the contract, of course you should find some legal counsel that can tell you exactly what is happening in the contract. So the most important things for me as far as the contract was concerned was who retained ownership, what rights was I granting, how did I get those rights back and when, exclusivity, uh, what deliverables I had to produce and when I had to produce them, and of course the payment schedule. Um, now these will vary from contract to contract and this is only for the um, original featured creators. If you're just doing the Discover or Canvas, you don't have to worry about contracts, just read the terms of service uh, and make sure you agree with everything they're doing. The biggest thing I gave up was probably the exclusivity, which means I'm not able to publish or print the comic for a given amount of time. The, it has to exclusively live on the Webtoon platform for that contracted amount of time, and that's going to vary from creator to creator contract to contract. Once the contract was done, the next step was to start writing. Now during the pitching process, we already had an outline and a summary, so we kind of knew where the story was going already. We just had to create the hard script. Um, and so that was a little bit of a process, writing it, sending it to the editors, getting changes back. Now everyone always wonders what it's like working with an editor, and every editor is going to be different, so it's about finding the right fit with the editor and figuring out how to work best with each other. Now my personal experience was it was mostly small changes, uh, maybe switching the dialogue here, adding some scenes here, you know, increasing the pacing between these things all very small changes and they were mostly suggestions, not a, you need to do it this way or change the story or, or make the characters act this way. It was all about um, basically taking my vision and kind of solidifying it. Now once the writing was done, I had to start drawing the thing. Um, so I started drawing the thing and it basically worked the same way as writing. I would submit the artwork, I would get feedback from the editor, make whatever changes were necessary. Uh, this was also small stuff. I never got anything feedback wise as, as designing the characters. It was mostly expressions, tweaking expressions, um, increasing uh, maybe the size of a panel to, to change the pacing, spacing the panels differently. So that was the stuff that came from them. It was all minor things just as an effort to help tell the story a little bit better. Now I had to get 10 chapters done before we launched the comic. Uh, part of this was so that we could post the first four episodes up there right away. So when people went there for the first time, there was enough content there to get them hooked and to understand the story and the characters and all that stuff. The remainder of those 10 chapters was to create a buffer. So just in case I got sick or something came up and I wasn't able to create a new episode that week, uh, there would be content in the buffer to basically fill that gap. So once the artwork was done, the next step was to submit the final artwork to Webtoon. At that point, they handled everything, including the uploading, the scheduling, uh, actually, they handled everything to do with the front end. They uh, created the thumbnails and the banner and all that stuff. Of course, I had to produce the actual uh, resources for those. Like I had to create the logo myself and 
that's the thing that we actually went back and forth on the most was creating the logo. We actually uh, had several changes to the logo, but I think in the end, we ended up with a really, really nice logo. Uh, after that, it was basically rinse and repeat for every episode, create the artwork, get edits, submit the artwork, and it goes online. So pretty smooth sailing as far as getting the comics done on a weekly basis. Of course, once the comic was published, it was out there for the entire world to see. And that was a really interesting part of the whole process, being able to see that quickly what people liked or didn't like, what confused them. It helped me make tweaks slightly to the story, but it also helped me grow as a writer and artist. I've learned things from there that I'm going to take into my future projects. And luckily I didn't really have any trolls trying to rain on my parade. Now, just a side note about trolls, the best thing to do with them is to not have an internet argument with them. You're going to end up with a zero net benefit there. What you want to do is just ignore them or say thanks for reading uh, because that will drive them nuts. Now outside of the comic, Webtoon was also really awesome. They did some cool stuff for me like they printed promotional flyers that I was able to hand out at conventions to promote my comic Hacksaw. They also created this giant freaking Rubik's Cube uh, with my artwork on it that they gave away as gifts for their New York Comic Con party, which they invited me to, and it was a killer party. Um, so basically, they just did a really great job of making me feel like I was part of a family, the Webtoon family, um, and I, I just, I'm super happy that I had that experience. Of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. You had the impending doom of the weekly deadline. Um, producing an episode takes a ton of work and it's hard to keep up with that schedule. Now I've heard from other creators that Webtoon is really forgiving about letting creators take a hiatus so they can catch their breath and rebuild their buffer. I never did this, I probably should have, but I'm way too stubborn to my own detriment. And that's why it's really important to have that buffer before you start posting. Working with Webtoon was an awesome life experience. Like I said, they really made me feel like part of the Webtoon family, maybe similar to what it's like to work for Marvel or DC, but it was for my own stories, for my own characters, for my own ideas, which made it that much more awesome. Hopefully I've answered everyone's questions. If there was something else you would like to know, let me know. Or if you just wanna let me know what your favorite candy is, mine is Sour Punch Straws. Be sure to like, link, love, hug, and sub for more sweet, sweet goodness. Peace.